Hi, my name's Eric Haynes and I'm an engineer at NVIDIA, and we're going to do a series of lectures about ray tracing. The first one is the basics of ray tracing. Let's get going. The thing I like to do at, in any of these lectures is give a little quote at the beginning, and this is from David Kirk, who's a fellow at NVIDIA, says, there's an old joke that goes, ray tracing is the technology of the future and it always will be. Well, the future is now here, as of at least 2018, that a single NVIDIA card, a Turing card, can now do real-time ray tracing. Let's start with the basics. What's a ray? Well, a ray is defined by just two things. It has an origin, some point in space, x, y, z, and a direction. And ray casting is the idea of taking that ray and shooting it out in that direction and finding what gets hit. And this is not in a rendering algorithm, it's just a basic tool in the toolbox. You can use it however you want. You could be using it for checking radiation or doing all kinds of other things. We use it for rendering. So ray casting is just shooting a ray out and seeing where it hits something. You can also use ray casting uh, between two points. So you may say, well, I've got a point A, point B, and I shoot a ray and I want to see if anything's in between. This could be used for, for example, if I want to see if there's a shadow. If you know, we have the points like uh, A and B, there's a light and a surface, that you can shoot that ray and if anything gets in the way, then you know that point B is in shadow. Ray casting is a way that you can actually make an image. So if you think of a screen, like a screen door, and you think of each little square on that screen door that you're looking through, think of that, that's your pixel. So you want to know what's at that pixel and what the ray hits. So the ray shoots through that pixel and goes out into the environment and hits a bunch of things, and whatever's closest is what you're going to see through that pixel. And then you can shoot rays towards the light, for example, and see if you have hit or missed anything in between. And if you've hit something, then the object's, uh, you know, your point, point of intersection is in shadow. Otherwise, it's lit. And this is actually the first use of ray tracing in a computational form is for, uh, by this person, a Apple. Back in 1968, he traced rays towards lights to get shadows. And his output device was a pen plotter, a pen that draws uh, on a big sheet of paper. So ray tracing really takes off back in 1980 with this seminal paper by Turner Witted. It covers a lot of interesting basic things that we still do nowadays, like anti-aliasing and bounding volume hierarchies, which I'll talk about in a minute. But basically he has this intuition or this idea of how can I get reflections and refractions and shadows and how can I do this in, in kind of a recursive way? That's the big breakthrough. So let's show how that works. Here we're shooting a ray from the eye again and it hits a piece of glass. So this glass is nice and shiny, so it's reflective and it's also refractive. So we might first shoot a shadow ray and the ray goes towards the light. Okay, good, that's illuminated. But we also do this thing, which is to spawn off two more rays, one in the reflection direction, going down below, and one in a refraction direction, going through the glass. So we can follow both of these rays. I'll ignore the one going off the screen, the reflection direction one. The refraction one, then we shoot another shadow ray and see if, again, the effect of the light. And then again, we spawn more rays. We can shoot a reflection if there's an internal reflection ray that's going upwards. And again, we'll kind of ignore how further it bounces and shoots off more rays. So we'll just follow the refraction one that's going off to the right. So that one going off to the right hits that box. And again, we can shoot a shadow ray. And that one actually is blocked, so we know that the box is in shadow. So with that, we now take all those contributions, all those intersection points, the two on the glass and the one on the box, and we kind of add them all up and uh, we get a color at the eye. We get a color for the pixel. So that's witted style ray tracing. It's really good for things like sharp shadows and reflections and refractions. The advantage of this kind of uh, rendering algorithm is that you can basically do it from the eye. You know that you are hitting a mirror surface and that it goes to the light and you basically get a, uh, a very few number of rays that you need to cast versus if you had sort of shot all the rays from the light and had them bounce around and almost all those rays are not going to actually get to the eye. So the next breakthrough as far as ray tracing goes is this Cook stochastic or sometimes called distribution ray tracing in 1984. The idea here is that instead of shooting just a single reflection ray, for example, you might have a glossy surface, something with kind of a sheen, and you shoot out sort of a burst of a rays instead. You can also get cool effects like motion blur. And the idea here is just that instead of shooting one reflection ray, you're shooting a bunch. Or instead of shooting one shadow ray, you're shooting a bunch to try to get a soft shadow. With stochastic ray tracing, you shoot a ray out, it hits the box, 
and then you shoot one ray at the area light. So our sun now is a little bit larger to give it some actual area, just like the real sun. And we pick some arbitrary point on that sun. This one made it all the way to the light. And here's two more rays, one hit, one missed. So now we know at this point that two thirds of our rays are hitting the area light. And so we can say, well, okay, the shadow's you know, somewhat soft, two thirds illuminated, but we can shoot more and more and more rays and get a better answer. So this is stochastic ray tracing, and the idea here is, like I say, just shooting a burst of rays. It's more expensive, you have to shoot more rays, and the more rays you shoot, the better the answer you get. But that's, you know, it's, it's often worth the cost. So in 1986 was sort of the next uh, theoretical leap, which is Kajia style um, diffuse inner reflection. And this is a paper, a classic paper, which we'll go to in a further lecture, in a later lecture, called the rendering equation. And basically his idea is, well, you know, what if we say the sky's the limit? We're just gonna shoot rays out from the eye and we're going to have each ray hit something and we don't necessarily know which way it's going to reflect. If it's a mirror, we know, sure, it'll reflect in the mirror direction, but say it's something like unglazed pottery or some other thing like cement or something. You then don't really know which way the light's coming from. Well, you know the light's coming from all kinds of different directions. So what you do is you shoot more rays in different directions. But with path tracing, you shoot just one ray in one direction and follow it along a path. So let's, uh, let's show you what that looks like. So here's path tracing where we shot one ray through, you know, through our pixel, and it's in one particular location in the pixel. It hits this box, and we shoot a secondary ray in some direction. And it goes off to the sky, say. We shoot another ray. That one happens to hit a light, so that's actually going to be a fairly important contribution. There's sort of a lot of direct illumination from the sun. Um, and notice that we've also put the pixel sample in a slightly different location within the pixel. This allows you to get sort of anti-aliasing kind of for free because you, by moving the samples around within the pixel, you're basically sampling the whole box, the whole pixel box, instead of just the center of the pixel. And so we go, we continue here, here's a path where we hit the ground and then it hit the cylinder and then it shot off down you know, to, to the ground somewhere else and so on. You keep shooting these rays and you get more and more paths. And once you have all the paths, then all meaning you're tired of shooting rays, you basically then add up all those contributions. You basically have figured out where the light's coming from for a bunch of different directions, a bunch of different paths, and you add them up and get a color. So in the film industry, for example, you'll often see scenes where they'll use 1,000 rays, um, 3,000 rays per pixel. And so those take a little while to compute. The point is, is that by doing this, you will eventually get the right answer. You, you know, it's sort of reversing the whole process of getting light percolating through the system and uh, but doing it just from the eye and you will eventually get the right answer. So that's path tracing and what makes ray tracing great is the fact that it can be that simple. It's just you're shooting a ray and bouncing it around along different paths and here's a ray tracer in fact that's on the back of a business card. This is from Paul Heckbert's business card when he was at Pixar in the 80s and it actually is a ray tracer. It will actually make a little ray traced scene with, uh, I think it's shoot, he's shooting against a bunch of spheres. So it's a very compact, simple kind of algorithm. You have this simple tool, a ray, and using those rays in various great ways, you can basically get beautiful results like this, where you're getting soft shadows and lovely reflections. And that's it for this lesson. I wanted to point at some further resources that you'll see on the webpage, links to places where you can find books, and there's also going to be a link for Ray Tracing Gems, which is a book that I helped co-edit. So thanks, and I'll catch you at the next lecture.